simplicity of putting lights on a person's face to so get a camera view, and then having notes down in front of you in the total darkness, trying to uh, unravel what it is you were going to say. But they now have a light here, and the light over there, and of course, up really beautiful. I also noticed on the board behind uh, that Anne was presented as Anne, but I'm presented as Alexander. And when I answer the phone and someone says, hello, is this Alexander? I, they're either selling insurance or some, somebody has the wrong number. Because my name is Sasha, I mean, it's Alexander, but I respond to Sasha for sure. And Alexander is a, is a formality that I've never quite gotten used to. So, Sasha is fine. Am I too far away? Oh, I speak a little louder for the translator. Yeah. All right, I'll try that. Anyway, oops. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Anne and I would like very much to spend uh, our first half hour, uh, first hour, uh, presenting the some of the past history of the psychedelic drugs, some of the present status and some of the future potentials of this area of drugs. And the second hour we'll spend uh, in uh, questions and answers, which in, in many ways is almost more comfortable because this gives us the knowledge of uh, awareness of what the audience is interested in and then we can address our answers to that particular interest. Um, uh, let me put in here that please uh, start right now writing down the questions you want to ask. Because remember, the worst thing is to get somebody uh, to have the first question. Nobody wants to be the first one. <laughs> so start writing them down now. <laughs> well, I'd like to introduce two people. Uh, you may very well know them both. Uh, the first of them is a fellow by the name of Louis Levine, who was very early in the area of the, the uh, pharmacology of mescaline back somewhere in about 1920s or 1930s. And he used the, uh, the, the he wrote a book about the uh, Fantastica, about the different states of mind that are created by, uh, psychotropic states of mind created by drugs, such as excitantia, which is a status of, of excitement and stimulation. And we have a lot of natural plant and synthetic compounds that play this role from the from nature, and the such things as uh, cocaine, um, we had synthetic uh, methamphetamine, amphetamine stimulants in general, materials that produce a, a state of usually heart acceleration, of excitement, of alertness, a lack of sleepness, uh, and those people who are normally not too vital find these drugs to be extremely useful because they put them in, a, in a, an advanced capability state, which is uh, their, their desire and not be part of their natural uh, doings. The disadvantage is that once you have found you can artificially generate this state, very often people wish to maintain that, and it does indeed disrupt uh, a lot of the human pharmacology. Uh, then he talked about the inebriating drugs, materials that put you out of the normal status, but into one of a little bit of uh, alcohol-like intoxication. There's alcohol, there's ether, uh, chloroform at that time, the use of chloroform as an, as an intoxicant was quite popular. They had the term chlorophyllomania, in which people would drink chloroform to get that intoxicated state and then eventually go unconscious. And of course, the, the synthetics are plentiful in this general area. Then they had the sedating drugs, the materials that caused you to go a little bit away from consciousness, eventually lose consciousness entirely, the hypnotica, uh, the, by the sedating, I should say. The opium, the sleeping pills that we now know of, uh, and quite generally used pharmacologically. Also he had the, what he called the hypnotica state, which was a state of, it has hypnosis, but uh, in our current vocabulary, usually these would be drugs that would cause amnesia, cause you to lose awareness of where you are. Uh, we have this hypotomic atropine world that was talked about yesterday. Uh, drugs that cause a loss of awareness of exactly what you are doing, where you are, uh, the Natura, uh, uh, the, the Henbane, the uh, Gypsum Weed, the Belladonna type drugs would fit in this category. And the active ingredient is Scopolamine. 
The drugs that I want to talk about, and the reason I think many people are here, is what he called the fantastic drug. These are the psychedelic drugs, and they are the ones that are a complete, of, of greatest interest to me, and I think to a number of you, to this more or less the theme of, of, this, um, of this meeting. The second person is a person not as well known, uh, a person, a writer, Stephen Wolfram, who uh, wrote a book called the, the New Kind of Science. And it's on the basis of my meeting with him and being, I was a, a co-lecturer on a stage with him in a little town of, of Camden, Maine, uh, about two years ago. And he got into a, he got into a very interesting aspect of his style of understanding science, that anything that is creating, that is new, and will become increasingly in public and in, in individual intention will grow, will change in an exponential way, in which, for example, you have things that get larger by orders of magnitude, by orders of by exponents from the from the normal to the kilo to the mega to the giga to the tera, every one of these being three orders of magnitude greater. Or things on the other side that are are, are as it gets smaller and more multiplied and more finally divided. You have things that go down into the micro, into the nano, into the, into the pico, to the vento, where everyone is getting smaller and smaller, and more and more, more of them, and more detail. This is a, a, his concept that all things of interest in this area, in, in, uh, of scientific curiosity, of stimulation to the imagination, of, of creating new tools and techniques with our modern development, would follow these, these, this rule of exponential uh, growth. And indeed, I would like to do that because I believe the concept of the psychedelic drug fits this category, this concept of movement very, very well. You have, for example, I look about it in terms of the talk I gave in May was based on this, this general idea and I want to elaborate more upon it here. The, for example, let's go back 100 years. In the year of 1900, 1905, uh, at that time, really, in our Western world, our Western scientific world, we had only two psychedelic drugs. We had, we had cannabis, the marijuana, the hash of ancient, ancient times, was known in, in, in the Western world. And you had the peyote, mescaline, was known. And there were no other psychedelic drugs known in Western science. The, if you go into the wilds of, of South America or into the ancient cultures, you'll find many of them. But they're not known to the Western scientists. And so this is the, 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 the window through which I wish to look, is the, the Western world of, of chemistry, of pharmacology, of medicine, and see what psychedelic drugs there are with, uh, and how they change in number with time. We had two at that time. Um, the uh, marijuana structure of the, any of the active components of marijuana were totally unknown. They, they only knew them as the plant, as the extract, as the hashish, as the various aspects of that plant. And in the peyote, the little, one of the beautiful examples of them upstairs here in the, in the, in the exhibit hall, uh, the, the active component was known to be mescaline, but the structure was not known, it had never been synthesized, it was not synthesized until about 1919, when the structure was first identified. But it had been known and explored for 25 years before that. The Hefter was one of the main uh, explorers, isolators and explorers of it, and Louis Levine was one of the more vocal uh, uh, lecturer and uh, presenter of that information to the public. Well, there were many that were known in that known, as I say, in the in the jungle, so to speak, but uh, were not.